Good evening, I'd like to call the meeting to order. It is 6.04 on May 9th, 2016, and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, would Ms. Sharkey like to start us off? Thank you. Next is roll call. Um, will Ms. Luna Reynosa help us with the roll call? Yes. Please let the record reflect that all commissioners are present. 
We'll move on to approval of the minutes, and that's item one for um, the minutes of the regular Planning Commission meeting of April 11th, 2016. Is there a discussion or a motion? Chair Warren O'Connor, I would make a motion that we approve the minutes. All right, the vice chair has made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, and Commissioner Murphy has seconded. Please register your votes. All right, and that motion passes four to zero. We'll move on to public comments. Anyone wishing to address the Planning Commission during the public comment section or on an agenda item is asked to complete a request to speak form available at the door. The completed form is to be submitted to the Planning Commission secretary prior to an individual being heard by the Planning Commission. Any person wishing to address the Planning Commission on a subject other than those scheduled on the agenda is requested to do so at this time. In order to conduct a timely meeting, there will be a three-minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for the public comments portion of the agenda. State law prohibits the Planning Commission from taking any action on a specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. Ms. Sharkey, are there any requests to speak forms on items that aren't on the uh, agenda? Okay. <coughs> so we'll move on to public hearings, and we have item two for Coastal Development Permit CDP 15-0012, approving a lot line adjustment within the Beechwood Park and Village site located at 34052 Doheny Park Road, this agenda item is continued from the meeting of April 11th, 2016. Uh, is there a staff report on item two? Yes, Danny Giamatti will give the staff report, please. Thank you, Ursula. Good evening, uh, Chairwoman O'Connor and fellow planning commissioners. So the subject coastal development permit is a lot line adjustment to, in order to update track map number 1275 to reflect the location of the physical lot boundary and to correct the existing encroachment of multiple home pads straddling two separate parks. All right. So Beechwood Park and Village is located in between Doheny Park Road and Sepulveda Avenue in Doheny Village. Uh, the site consists of two mobile home parks, uh, each containing a separate entrance, lease sites, clubhouse, and common areas. There's a distinct wood fence that runs through the center of the site, acting as a divider between two parks. However, both parks are issued one annual permit to operate under Beechwood Park and Village. There are no physical changes proposed within Beechwood Park and Village as part of this lot line adjustment. And as you can see here, this is Park 1 and Park 2 separated by color. So this is the current orientation of Lot 1, Tract 1275, highlighted in yellow. In 2013, the park was sold to Doheny Park Associates, whom wished to correct several instances where mobile homes crossed the common lot line between, two, between each park. So rather than physically moving any mobile homes, DPA is requesting that the city approve a lot line adjustment to update track map number 1275 to reflect the location of the physical lot boundary and correct the existing encroachment of multiple ho mobile home pads straddling two separate parks. The Dana Point Zoning Code states that the coastal a coastal development permit is required for lot line adjustments on properties located within the coastal overlay district. Therefore, the applicant has filed a CDP for the approval of this lot line adjustment. And, uh, this image is track number 1275 with the proposed, uh, proposed parcel. Let's get down there. Okay, so this is a rendering of the existing lot one, uh, 1275 tracked. As you can see, there's multiple mobile home pads that encroach or that currently straddle the park to park boundary line uh, along that prior Via Sarah Avenue. Uh, although the primary reason for the lot line adjustment request is to update the track map so that it more closely reflects the physical boundary between each park, which is a wood fence, uh, shown in this diagram on the bottom here, um, show you, located right here. This is the physical lot boundary or the wood fence. Uh, additionally, the California Building Code does not allow structures to encroach over the property line, uh, so which is another reason why the lot line adjustment is necessary. The property owner seeks to correct this condition without physically changing the development pattern that presently exists on site. 
So this is a image that shows the proposed, uh, this diagram is of the new southerly, the southerly property line of lot one tract 1275, which would be adjusted 16 feet in the southerly direction. The updated track map will correctly identify the physical park to park boundary fence, which exists on site. As you can see on the top right, there's an image of that wood fence. And that, as I said, it separates the park, uh, both parks, both separate parks. Okay, so it's obvious to see in this picture that the proposed lot land adjustment will correct existing building encroachments and update track map number 1275 to reflect the physical park to park boundary fence. It's also very important to note that there's no, relation, there's no relationship between the existing land leases and the requested lot line adjustment. Uh, once again, there's no physical changes proposed to the site as a result of this lot line adjustment. So therefore, staff recommends that the subject project is consistent with the policies and provisions of the general plan, zoning code, and local coastal program, and recommends approval of CDP 15-0012. The applicant and the represent and representatives of the owners are here to answer any further questions. Additionally, we have public works staff uh, on hand to answer any other questions. Thanks. All right, thank you for that. Um, do the commissioners have any questions for staff? Commissioner McCann. <coughs> thank you. I just wanna make sure that everybody understands. So with the slot line adjustment action tonight, there will be no impact to the residents of the mobile home parks, correct? Nothing involved with the slot line adjustment, no. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Murphy. So <laughs> to further in on, on that, so it, definitely each tenant will retain the same full use and enjoyment of, the, of uh, his or her lot as it is today and uh, after the LLC is approved and the tenants will see no change, correct? N no changes. No changes are involved with this lot line adjustment, no. Any other questions? If not, then um, do we have any uh, requests to speak? All right. Um, it looks like Troy Gadlin is the first speaker. Did I may have. Oh, no, thank you. I, I just told the officer. Okay. Um, Kyle ja Jaffe? Just present in case there were any specific questions. Okay. Jeff Mays. <coughs> uh, Jeff Mays, Chair and Civil Engineers. I'm available for any questions. Um, I, we did the application <coughs> for Troy. Okay. Um, Susie Horbath? Okay. Oh, so we have this one. L Larry Edwards. Please state your name and city of residence. And uh, my name, Larry Edwards. My city of residence is Capistrano Beach, California. Um, I would like to thank Excuse you for me. this opportunity to speak. Please um, lift, thank you very much. We record the meeting for a minute. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, I've handed the commissioners, the chairwoman and the vice chairman some information. If you'll turn to page three, please. Um, I'm going to be sh asking you to look at some maps. This is how I accessed the maps. The satellite map is a city of Dana Point map. Uh, from City Hall, and the next map is the 429 watershed map, also from City of Dana Point, okay? Okay, page five shows the area that we're, we're speaking of. Uh, Ms. Murphy, uh, one page back. Oh, one page back for the one we're talking about, okay? And the white line running diagonal across the page is the property line that we're speaking of moving. Um, parcel one 
is in the northern part, and parcel two is the southern portion. The next page shows the fort, it shows the legend on the 429 uh, watershed map. The next page shows uh, A is parcel one, B is the mainline storm drain that runs through parcel one, parcel two. C is the property line, D is parcel two. E, F, and G are businesses in this area. The next map, uh, okay, back, back to this map. Okay, B is the main line storm drain. Okay, the next map, it shows mobile homes in parcel one sitting directly on top of this main line storm drain. Okay, um, so mobile homes, vehicles, and RVs sitting on top of the storm drain easement. Um, just in, I'm just concerned that if the weight of these mobiles, vehicles, cause damage to the storm drain, that Dana Point not be responsible to repair this damage or reimburse. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other speakers on this item before I close the public hearing? Going, going, gone. All right. Uh, I'll close the public hearing and I'll bring it back to the uh, commissioners for comment. Anybody want to volunteer or do I have to pick someone? <laughs> okay, Commissioner McCann. If everyone else is going to be shy. <laughs> Um, I appreciate the gentleman. Um, it looks like he did a lot of research on on this information in the storm drain. Um, as near as I can tell, it's a you know it's an existing condition, and so it, it's not impacted by this lot line adjustment. We're not approving a new development plan out there or anything. So I understand the concern. But I don't think that this action is kind of irrelevant to this particular action. And um, I appreciate staff for and the applicant for coming and bringing back the more information and the answers to the questions that we had. And knowing that it does has no impact to the residents, I'll be in support of this um, uh, lot line adjustment. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair. Or uh, Commissioner Murphy. <laughs> Just following up on that same vein, I would be interested to know if there is any evidence to support that something might go awry with, you know, this particular procedure with the storm drain. Of course, so I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, we could ask staff maybe to address that question. Mr. Giamatti. Uh, we have uh, Matthew Kunk here, he's in the Public Works Department. Uh, he may be able to address that better. Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, the, the city is, aw is aware of the storm drain location. Uh, the city maintains an easement to access and to maintain that uh, line that would not be affected by this lot line adjustment. It's 20 feet, I believe, in, in width, so it gives us ample room. Uh, the storm drain line is, is inspected annually, to, as are all the storm drain systems in the city for uh, any possible leaking or damage or anything, and we have not had any reported problems with this line to date. Okay, any questions for Dana Point? All right, uh, Vice Chair. So uh, I know I, you know, in the staff report, I did read the letter that the applicant provided that addressed the questions that came up, so thank you very much for that. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is, is an imaginary line. It's it's not anything other than a piece of paper. It's not, you know, from what I'm hearing, making any changes or approvals to the leases on on the uh, project, and uh, makes no physical or material change at all. And so, for that reason, as well as the fact that it meets all of our development standards, I'm in support of this tonight. 
And I just wanted to uh, thank staff for you know going back to the uh, uh, table again and and uh, giving us further information. That was really helpful because last me meeting it seemed uh, more a, a lot more confusing, and it seems like um, you know the applicant has reached out to the homeowner or the uh, the mobile home park residents and have cleared up a lot of the issues because they're not here tonight <laughs> uh, complaining. So I think uh, you must have done a great job of doing that. Um, I too agree with my fellow commissioners that um, it's necessary to cor correct the existing encroachment of the multiple mobile home pads um, just to, um, I, I think it's necessary to do to clean, to do some housekeeping. Um, one thing, uh, one question I forgot to ask. Um, I'm just curious why we didn't, they didn't also want to do uh, a zoning change as well um, because it, they're mixed use. Why didn't they try to do it all at once? Well, the requisite zone, recreation, commercial, uh, uh, the zoning code states that it allows mobile home parks that were in existence prior to, I believe, 1991, I'd have to go back and check, um, that they are allowed by right in that zone. Um, anything thereafter um, would require, uh, actually would be prohibited. So um, they are a permitted use within that zone. Okay. All right. Um, do we have a motion? Vice Chair Nelson? Yes, Chairwoman O'Connor. I'll make a motion that we approve Coastal Development Permit CDP 15-0012, approving a lot line adjustment within the Beechwood Park and Village site located at 34052 Doheny Park Road. Second. Okay. <laughs> the vice chair has uh, made a motion, and Commissioner McCann has seconded. Please register your votes. And that motion passes four to zero. So we will now move on to item three for a uh, variance V15 006 and minor site development permit SDP 15 0049 M to allow the development of a two-story single-family dwelling and attached garage which exceeds the maximum allowable height, building height and a roof deck on the home in residential single-family 22 zoning district at 34156 Crystal Lantern. Is there a staff report on item three? Yes, and Danny's up again. Two in one night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, tonight's proposal is a request for a height variance and a roof deck in conjunction with the construction of a single family home under, uh, C, uh, under SD, I'm sorry, variance 15 006 and site development permit 15 0049. So the subject site is a 2,400 roughly square foot vacant lot which fronts Crystal Lantern to the east and backs to, the, to an existing single family dwelling to the west. The lot's rectangular in shape and it's bordered by similar single family development to all sides. Due to the steep terrain of the area, there are many multi-story homes surrounding the subject site which exceed the height limit. So the topo topography of the site is very unique as its lowest point is located roughly 12 and a half feet uh, lower than the sidewalk and street elevation as well as uh, the surrounding adjacent development. Because of the challenges in developing such a lot, uh, in, uh, back in October of 2014, the owner submitted an application to the city for what's called a preliminary review. Uh, the preliminary review was heard by Planning Commission uh, on October 27, 2014, and at this meeting the commissioners provided general feedback to the owner, uh, which also included a discussion regarding a variance request for building height. Therefore, the applicants requesting entitlements to construct a 2,167 square foot, two story single family dwelling with a 418 square foot attached garage and a 300 square foot roof deck. The floor plan includes three bedrooms, four bathrooms, one kitchen, and an accessory, accessory living areas. The applicant's also requesting a height variance to deviate from the city's height regulations and a minor site development permit to allow for a roof deck. With the exception of the building's height, the proposal meets all development standards of the RSF 22 district. 
Again, due to the site's unique topography, a variance is required in order to design a practical building and match the existing development of neighboring properties with similar constraints. The structure must be erected on caissons to bring the finished floor relatively level with the street. Because building height is measured from where the structure intersects the lowest existing grade on site, which is approximately 12 and a half feet of, or which is approximately 12 and a half feet, uh, that amount is lost in bring, uh, bringing the finished floor flush with Crystal Lantern. Uh, as you can see in this, uh, 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 this elevation plan, uh, the uh, lowest structure point where it intersects the existing grade is right at the bottom there in the middle point. And then from here to the top um, is, is what the, obviously what the height variance is requested for. Uh, so the adjustment brings the total height of the structure to 37 feet, 10 and a half inches, as measured from the lowest structure point to the highest roof peak, as shown in, with that red line. Uh, although the deviation is 8 feet, 10 and a half inches above the required height limit for that district of 29 feet, the structure will be consistent with the surrounding homes. Uh, this is uh, obviously a rendering. As measured from the finished floor to top of Ridge, uh, basically where those people are standing, uh, the proposed building is 25 feet 6 inches. This puts it relatively level with the roof of the northern neighbor uh, to the left and uh, a little bit lower than the uh, neighbor to the right. Without the entitlement, the building would be limited to a single story dwelling uh, and would be dramatically smaller than the surrounding homes in the same vicinity zone with similar constraints. Additionally, the applicant's proposing a 300 square foot roof deck, which covers approximately 23% of the roof area. The roof deck is also going to be integrated into the roof system and will not exceed the requested height and designed as to not be visible from all sides of the structure or from the grade below. The proposed roof deck not only is found to be in conformance with the zoning code, but also proposes similar design to surrounding homes. Regarding materials for the proposed uh, home, uh, the, uh, uh, the outside will be a, a, a blue smooth stucco finish and uh, it'll provide some relief with a redwood, uh, some redwood siding uh, architectural features. All deck railings along the front and rear are pr proposed in stainless steel. So staff recommends that the required findings can be made for the entitlements as outlined in the attached draft resolution and the Planning Commission approved variance V15-0006 and Minor Site Development Permit SDP15-0049M. The, uh, the designer and the owner are also here to answer any additional questions uh, as well. I don't know if not still here. Uh, Public Works staff is here to also um, answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do the commissioners have any questions? Commissioner Nelson, or Vice Chair Nelson. Thanks, Danny. Uh, a couple questions for you here. Um, do you know, because I don't have it and I was not here, what changes, if any, were made from the original proposal to where we are tonight? Yeah, or originally uh, uh, the applicant had proposed a three-story structure and was requesting a um, obviously a deviation in height. Um, additionally, they were going to uh, enclose the uh, area below uh, uh, below the home or this this area that obviously where the uh, where the ravine is. Um, so they were proposing a three-story structure in that sense. Um, uh, addi uh, additionally, the driveway was going to be um, I think the driveway grade was was a was roughly 15%, I want to say, 10 to 15%. Uh, so at the meeting, the planning commissioners uh, uh, said that they would not be in support of a driveway that was so steeply sloped. Um, so now, the, obviously, the design has changed to a two-story structure. Um, the massing is, is, is a lot less. Um, the gross floor area has been reduced by about 1,000 square feet as well. Okay, great. And then um, let me just go through my notes here. So the driveway is about 2% is what it looks like now? Correct. Um, Upslope. Let's see here. Can you walk me through? I was looking on the uh, plans. Is there a, a drainage easement that runs underneath? I mean, is this like a drainage? Route? Yeah, there's an existing water course or drainage easement that runs uh, underneath uh, the homes uh, in that natural ravine. Um, if you can, s I think it might have that a picture. That opening in on the neighbor's house to allow for flowing. Correct. Yeah, they have. Um, if you you can see in this picture, actually, if you look towards the bottom right here, yep. um, that's. That's what they had provided um, initially. Uh, but this one is uh, obviously not going to affect uh, that drainage easement at all uh, since it will be erected on caissons. The Public Works Department felt this would be the best option as to not affect the natural slope. Gotcha, okay. Um, 
And then I'm, I was looking at the landscape plans and I compared them to the site plan. It looks like the sidewalk area is on one set of plans and not on the other. So I'm not sure if they're, if that's getting put in or not. If you look on A1, it, it, talk, it has a note to uh, install sidewalk, but then when you go to the landscape plan, it appears to just show planting. I see the discrepancy, yeah. You're saying between the site plan and the uh, landscape plan? Yeah, it seems like this neighborhood has got some inconsistent sidewalk areas, so. Definitely. I assume that's something staff can deal with. Yeah, and. Uh, if not, we have a sidewalk here or not. In, in addition to that, an encroachment permit's gonna be required for any landscaping within that right of way area. I think that is, let me just make sure. And then I'm looking at these plans and I was looking at your elevation. So if you're looking at the front elevation, to the left, it's about the same height as the neighbor, and to the right, it's actually lower, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, uh, and uh, the uh, designer, he, sh he shot the, uh, uh, the measurements for the neighbor to the right and left, and he determined that the, the home to the right is roughly uh, four feet higher uh, uh, than this home. So it's almost perfectly in line with the home to the left. So it's pretty consistent with that general step down of the uh, crystal lantern. It follows the, uh, follows the street well. That was it, thank you. Okay. Commissioner Murphy. Uh, <clears throat> in that same topic, I, I just want some clarification. Uh, I know that the Planning Commission 2014 had some concerns about the drainage solutions for the site. Has, has the city um, reconfigured this uh, project so that there won't, you know, that we won't have any drainage problems? I believe that the public's work, public works department is requiring that any drainage be redirected to the uh, to the street to Crystal Lantern. Um, but I think we can ask Matt. Is that? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. All roof drainage will be directed to the street as well. And Madam Commissioner, th um, I was at that meeting, and I recall also that part of the drainage issue was that. The steep of the sloping driveway was going to run some of the drainage right down into the garage, and the commission at that time was concerned about that. So as a result, now there is a pot positive drainage so that the that two percent slope runs to the street from just for the driveway. Okay. So that that part of it was solved. Good, because uh, just looking at the the elevation slope in that picture, it's hard to 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 envision the house and how all this is going to work so that everybody's kept safe and sound. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate that. That's it. Thank you. Commissioner McCann. Thank you. So uh, just to follow on Vice Chair Nelson's question. So there is an easement underneath the, it says easement, and if so, who is the easement to? It says easement on the plans. Right. Or is it may just be referring to a drainage easement in that sense as opposed to an actual. Is that correct, Matt? We'll get Matt here. Evening. Uh, there's no recorded easement. It's a natural uh, existing water course, which uh, the other uh, developed properties have taken care to ensure that the natural drainage path is continued. So this home would uh, continue in line with, with the existing development there. So it's, it's, a, it's a natural drainage course, which is being protected through the various stages of development in this area. Okay, thank you. And I'll just add as to the question of the sidewalk, um, and Matt here can confirm, um, the pattern, the current pattern of newer development in there is to include a sidewalk, and that is notwithstanding the landscape plan, the proposal would have a sidewalk. Okay, I can't read the dimension. It looks like it's maybe 20 feet from the garage door to the face of curb. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so if you put a sidewalk in there, then they, for all practical purposes, can't park in the, in the driveway? It would not be legal to park over the portion that extends it where the sidewalk is. Okay, so buy a smart car. 
<laughs> okay. Um, and then I'm on the landscape plan. It looks like there's a pattern for. Are they putting pavers underneath the home? Uh, this was an idea that they 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 played with a bit um, as part of the, uh, the discretionary approval. Uh, we don't require that uh, that a full landscape plan in compliance with the state models water efficiency ordinance and uh, licensed landscape architect design those plans. So this may change. Um, but uh, as of right now, what they're proposing is a, a small area um, that would be level that they could probably they could they could utilize as a as a patio in essence and uh, a pavers along the left hand side for um, any requisite access or uh, uh, I think in garage uh, uh, garbage cans or something like that. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. Uh, can you uh, walk me through the roof deck? There are plans for the roof deck? Yeah, no problem. Let's go back to that slide as well. Actually, this is probably a good one for it. Uh, so on this uh, on this front elevation, uh, you can see that the roof deck is the is that flat parapet in the center of the. Uh, of the roof there. Uh, it's going to be at the same height, so it will not protrude any higher than the requested uh, the requested height, uh, which is going to be in line with the uh, the parapets of these facades on the left and right hand side. Um, and in addition to that, the roof deck will be accessed from the rear. There will be a staircase um, access accessed from the back. Um, I believe that might be why they're placing the pavers to the left as well, so they can access that. So there will be no internal access. Um, in addition, the roof deck will be, uh, the staircase will be architecturally integrated into the design of the home uh, so that it basically blends in. Um, and it's 300 square feet maximum. Uh, the zoning code states that you can have a roof deck that is uh, 300 square feet or 25% of the roof area directly below the deck. Of the I'm sorry, the floor area directly below the deck. In this case, uh, the floor area is larger, so they're uh, limited to a maximum of 300 square feet. Um, additionally, it'll, it's going to be located in the back left-hand side of the home. Okay. Um, and then let's talk about the uh, the height. Um, you had the the picture of uh, with the little the people in it. Okay. Let's yeah, show let's me that. Go back to that. There we All go. Right, there we go. So, I mean. Everybody, I think, thinks that, you know, oh my gosh, 37 feet. Really 37 high. 37 feet and 10 and a half inches, which sounds really bad, but then you realize, okay, but you're measuring from 12 feet below uh, Correct. the sidewalk. Correct. Yeah, the city of Dana Point is very conservative with the way that we take height measurements. Um, we take that measure measurement from the uh, uh, lowest existing grade or finished pad, whichever is lower, because they are not touching the existing grade of this lot. Um, then the lowest struck, uh, then the uh, the height measurement is taken from the lowest structure point, basically where the structure touches the existing grade. In this case, it's 12 and a half feet lower than uh, the, the finished floor, which in the finished floor is actually about a foot higher than the sidewalk. Uh, so it's, it's right, right around there. But um, it, because of that, it, the height seems very high, yes, 37 and some change. Um, but as I said, that being said, from the, uh, from the street level, you're, you're going to see about a 25, 26 foot high building that is in line with the other ones. And um, and they could have gone higher. They could have gone to 29 feet. Um, they can go up to 29 feet because the the uh, the lot has greater than a 20 percent slope average. So basically, this is under. Um, if if you're just measuring from uh, the sidewalk, this is under the height limit. Correct. Area. Correct. Yeah, and if it's uh, if it had a pitched elements, which it does, it actually could exceed the 29 feet up to 31, um, given the given the pitch. I believe it's those those portions on the left and right could actually go up to 31 feet, um, given the uh, the uh, average slope of the lot. Okay. All right. Um, then uh, any other questions from the commissioners? No. All right. Then we'll do the public comments. <laughs> Um, our first speaker is, it looks like, is it Tins or Thin, Jeff Ho? Um, please 
come up to the podium and uh, state your name and city of residence. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is uh, Jeff Ho, and I live the house next door. <laughs> That's my house. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so glad that I'm here today. I think all of you have answered a lot of my questions. I got from last week with this letter said, okay, you know, it succeeded the city height. My first concern was like, oh no, this is no good. Okay. <laughs> So uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, just to let you know that my background in engineering, so everything that we do is, you know, we follow the guidelines, we have standard, you know, maximum threshold whatsoever, okay? So as long as, you know, the, the builder comply with the city code and the city feel that, okay, this con the construction of this house is safe, because I'm really worried if something will happen, right, it may collapse into my house because we have lived it for five years and I will tell you, the wind load during Santa Ana season is very, very, very strong, okay? I mean, it can blow you away. And same thing with during the flood season, you know, the first year we was here, we came here in 2010. I saw the water came down from Crystal Lantern Street. I was terrified. Right? The water was like three, two, three feet deep rushing down, right? So my, you know, m my immediate reaction was like, oh my God, you know, if they build this, this house, the taller, they build a house, the more they at risk. It's not only that you have the risk due to the, the wind load, you call the wind loading, okay, the, you know, like, and also, right, the, the flush loading as well during the flood season. So that's my, my, my concern. Uh, I'm so glad, okay, that you brought up, okay, the drainage. You know, I came here and we have so much problem with the drainage. And in fact, okay, I contacted the city several times because all of the dust and debris keep coming down, as you mentioned, okay, it followed that natural drain, it dumped into our house. And I had to go out and clean it out. In fact, okay, one year, right, I have to have to clean out like every other week. So I don't know if the city will do anything about it or, or, or the builder will do anything about it to minimize, okay, that type of problem. Because I don't want the water to come all the way down my house and, you know, create a problem, you know, uh, not only my house, but also the house, you know, like, like down the street. So that is all I want to say. And, uh, and it seems like you're very, very thorough. You ask all kinds of questions. So that eased my concern a little bit. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. All right. Uh, any other speakers on this? No? Then well, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the commissioners for comment. Um, Commissioner Murphy. Well, in, initially I was concerned when I read the, the um, specifications about the variance and I looked at the picture and I looked at the, the property, but in looking through and listening to what was said, it sounds to me like the requirements for the variances have been met and there have been so um, with that I would be ready to move forward thank you vice chair Nelson I didn't get your name Jeff but thanks for coming out and speaking <coughs> and um, and I think you brought up some good stuff for staff to address uh, going forward um, when I look at this project I think I had the ex exact same reaction you probably did uh, when I saw this variance and um, but when I opened up the uh, package, it made a lot of sense. So you know, when we take into account the shape of the lot, the topography, now we learn a little bit more about the drainage issue out here, and you look at how they're building this house um, and, and what is really a very difficult site. Um, you know, and, and then you take a look at the surrounding neighborhood. It, you know, the, if we weren't to approve this, you'd end up with a single-story house surrounded by you know, two- and three-story homes on the exact same block, and I think we wouldn't be doing this property uh, it's justice and it definitely should be developed the way that they proposed. Um, so for that, I'm gonna support that, the variance and the minor permit here. Commissioner McCann. Thank you. I'd just like to echo the sentiments of my fellow commissioners. Um, it's a very challenging lot and I think the applicant and the designer have done a really great job. I know that those caissons and, and um, raised slab are not gonna be inexpensive to build, so I commend you for um, taking it on. I think the architecture looks great. Um, 
I think that if if you look at the site and and look at the conditions and read the necessary findings of fact for the variance, I can't imagine an easier project to say it clearly, without question, meets all of the conditions. Um, with respect to the person who spoke, I just say, and I was unclear which house you have, which side, but um, it's super important to make sure that the drainage paths are clear of debris. This house, the way it's proposed to be built, will do nothing to inhibit the water flow. So, but uh, if, if you're on the downstream house, I saw the, the opening there is pretty small, so I'd make sure that doesn't get clogged up with, you know, trees, branches, or debris, because that could cause you a significant problem. But I'll be in support of the project. I was on the commission in uh, October 2014 when this project came to us for review, and uh, so I'm really glad that um, the uh, subterranean garage was eliminated because that really would have, you know, uh, blocked the path for the drainage and would have, you know, caused a problem. So I'm really glad that <laughs> you listened to what the commission had to say. And um, I was very concerned at first when I read, you know, 37 feet and 10 and a half inches. <laughs> and then once you really, you know, you realize what a uh, difficult lot this is, that you have, you know, that 12 and a half foot uh, gully, basically, in, uh, from which you're measuring the height. Then all of a sudden you realize, okay, it's not really, you know, 37 and 10 and a half inches. It's, you know, 25 and a half, and you can actually go, you know, higher than that. So you're, some, you know, th there is no effect of the variance. You know, um, it's not like you're going above the um, the height limit for that street, and it's very compatible. It's within the same height levels. Um, so yeah, uh, when we're talking about a variance request and the different hardships, you know, you've got the drainage, you've got the slope uh, problem, um, and uh, uh, to me that is a hardship, and um, it should be considered um, reasonable for a variance request. And it's not like you know the planning commission gives out variances, you know, willy nilly. It really it, it's difficult to to get a variance in Dana Point. And so when we do give them, grant them, it's for um, projects that really do have a hardship. So, and I really believe this qualifies um, for, for that. So um, those are my comments. If we have a um, motion, Commissioner McCann. I move that we approve, the Planning Commission approve variance V 15-0006 and minor site development permit SDP 15-0049M to allow the development of a two-story single-family dwelling and attached garage which exceeds the maximum allowable building height and a roof deck on the home in residential single-family 22 <laughs> RSF 22 zoning district at 34156 Crystal Landrum. Uh, Commissioner McCann uh, made a motion. Is there a second? I second it. Commissioner Murphy seconded. Please <coughs> register your votes. And that motion passes four to zero. Congratulations. Um, we will move on to item four for a coastal development permit CDP 16-0002 to allow a partial demolition, remodel, and additions to an existing single-family dwelling located within the residential single-family three zoning district at 34811 Doheny <coughs> Place. And uh, Ms. Lena Renosa, is there a report on item four? Yes, <coughs> John Sultan will give the staff report. Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioners. This is a coastal development permit for a addition to an existing home on Doheny Place. This lot, which uh, is above Palisades Drive, is considered to be a coastal bluff lot, even though it's separated uh, from the highway by Palisades Road. It's still within the appeals area of the Coastal Commission. 
as well as uh, considered a, a coastal bluff lot. By virtue of that, um, any additions or major modifications to a home that are within 50 feet of a coastal bluff do require a coastal development permit. And this is a, a major remodel with some additions. Here's some pictures of the existing residence. The existing residence is roughly about 2,400 square feet. Here's a picture from the rear. The house is not in a very good condition currently and it's been vacant for quite some time. Uh, I would suspect that the neighbors would be happy to see someone take over this project and uh, make it uh, a nice part of the neighborhood. This is the site plan with the street to the right of Doheny Place and the uh, Coastal Bluff to the left. There are no proposed changes within the bluff top other than landscaping. Um, you can see the existing home, uh, which will be remodeled, is shown in the lighter color and the dark gray part shows the, where the addition would occur um, for living area. And then the hatched area to the bottom right is a new car garage. The existing garage would be demolished, uh, replaced with a, uh, from a two car to a three car garage. The main floor plan, um, there are some additions including the garage area. The, the interior will be reconfigured and modernized with some additional uh, area proposed that would uh, really improve the entry of the home. And then there are, is a stairway to an existing lower level, um, which is a media game and gym. And there will be, uh, it will not be expanding towards the bluff, but it will be expanding further underneath the home by several hundred square feet. The uh, street elevation is shown at the top here. Um, there is a new ridge line where you see the clear story windows right here. This is a new part of the roof and it will be approximately 18 inches above the existing ridge line. But no higher than the maximum 26 feet that is allowed. So just this peak right here will be at the 26 feet. Looking at the side elevation on the right side, you can see how the lot terraces down. This is existing roof here on the, on the lower right where the cursor is moving. This is a new ridge roof line where the addition will be occurring in this area. This is the right side elevation showing the existing ridge line, and this is the new ridge line with the new garage right here. And then the rear here, this is uh, going to be remodeled, but the massing of the home is pretty much unchanged on the ocean facing side of the home. Uh, it's about a 50% square footage addition to the home. It will be uh, from go from about 2,400 to about 3,800 and change with the two car garage being demolished with a three car garage as I said earlier. So in summary, um, the project conforms to really all the development standards. Currently the home uh, as it exists does encroach into some yard areas. Those areas will be fixed and will be made to conform. So with the additions and the remodel, everything will be conforming to the current code. Um, the findings, we feel the findings for the coastal development permit can be made as uh, recommended in the attached draft resolution and its staff recommendation to approve the resolution for the CDP. Um, we, I'm not aware of any correspondence from any neighbors regarding any concerns about this. It's not in an HOA. That concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, do the commissioners have any questions? No, Commissioner McCann. No, no questions. All right. Uh, any requests to speak for him? Oh, it's an easy one. <laughs> 
All right, I'll bring it back to uh, the commissioners for discussion. I guess I, I have to open and close the public. I don't know if I said that or not. <laughs> I think the record will reflect that you open and close the public okay. hearing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyone want to start us out then, Commissioner Murphy? Um, I, I'm very familiar with that house. I, I live sort of in the area and have probably walked by it a hundred times. Um, and it's on a street which most people are familiar with, Doheny. And there are all manner of shapes and sizes and, and uh, widths and heights of houses on that. And so it's, it's really, a, it's a great street. And um, having watched this house go into disarray after many years, it kind of went into disarray. And it's been sitting there for all this time. And I'm, I think it's, 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 this plan looks good and it fits the neighborhood and how this is going. Thank you. Vice Chair? Yeah, so um, and I'll, I'll, I would echo <coughs> my fellow uh, commissioners' comments. It'll be nice to see them remove the bars off the windows. And <laughs> um, I think when I went down the street, I noticed pretty close across the street, there was a three-story house. So, so like you said, that it, it's a kind of a hodgepodge of different types of housing here. Uh, but this looks great. It's a really well-designed remodel and looking forward to seeing it built. Commissioner McCann. Yeah, I just, I echo my fellow commissioners. Um, went out there right at sunset time, spectacular sunset. It's a spectacular lot. I hope the owner is here. I truly commend, you know, the design. It, it's great architecture. Really looking forward to seeing it get built. I really can't add anything further um, from what everybody else said. Um, I think it's going to be a great improvement to that street, and um, it, it is an attractive uh, facade, on, and uh, I think it's a great project. So with that, I think we need a motion so these people can get started. <laughs> Mr. McCann, you're busy today. I move that we approve Coastal Development Permit CDP 16-0002 to allow a partial demolition remodel and additions to an existing single family dwelling located within the residential single family three zoning district at 34811 Doheny Place. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the Vice Chair made the second. Uh, please register your vote. And that motion passes four to zero. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to, I think we're at, yes, item five. For Coastal Development Permit CDP 14-0016 for an at-grade fully signalized pedestrian crosswalk intersection in the vicinity of the Surfside Inn at 34680 Coast Highway. Is there a staff report on item five? <clears throat> yes, uh, John Tilton will give the staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. This is a coastal development permit for a new crosswalk in Capo Beach. Although um, the overall project is quite a bit more complicated than that, the action tonight that's being requested is just simply a CDP for the crosswalk. Um, as the report stated, in 1980s, the county, this is prior to cityhood, the county as well as the Coastal Commission approved the uh, Surfside Inn, uh, which is right adjacent to the bridge here, and the bridge, the existing bridge that spans over PCH and the Metrolink Railway. Um, the elements right on the coast have not been kind this bridge and over the years uh, it has deteriorated to the point where now it's the uh, county has applied to the Coastal Commission who has jurisdiction over this bridge because they approved the original one uh, for an emergency permit to demolish it. Uh, it's currently falling apart and there is a danger potentially of it uh, maybe not a cata catastrophic failure, but at least some uh, failure where pieces of it could fall. 
So uh, the plan is to remove the bridge that spans over PCH and replace, replace it with a safe, fully signalized crosswalk in its place because access uh, just to remove the bridge would take away the coastal access and um, neither the city nor the Coastal Commission would, would like that. Um, staff here has shown the approximate location of the new crosswalk with some PowerPoint uh, trickery here. Um, this is the site, if you're familiar with it, um, Doheny Village, um, the San Juan Creek, and you go down coast on PCH, and it's across the street from Doheny State Beach. The bridge is in this area. We zoom in a little bit. Here's the Surfside Inn. You're familiar with uh, Olamendi's restaurant right here. Uh, I myself have had breakfast at Olamendi's and walked across the bridge to the beach. Um, this, was, this is the bridge right here and the proposed crosswalk would be just to the left of the driveway to Surfside Inn. Uh, this portion right here, which crosses the railroad tracks, would remain until such time as the county des determines that that needs to be replaced or refurbished. Here's an aerial view, obviously with the tenting of Surfside Inn. Not sure when that was taken, but we wanted to show the location of the crosswalk with this view as well. We have representatives of both the county and public works, including our city engineer, our director of public works, and Matt Kunk from our engineering department to answer any technical questions that you might have with respect to the traffic and the safety of the crosswalk and reasoning behind that. Um, but that concludes my presentation. Again, um, as you could read from the report, the permit for the emergency demolition is through the Coastal Commission. Um, I believe we've had some actually a very recent update with that and they are supporting that, um, that permit for that due to the danger. And um, they're looking forward to the, the city and the county cooperatively moving together to create this crosswalk. Uh, but it does require a coastal development permit. We feel that the, uh, the findings can be made for that permit and are recommending that you approve the coastal development permit. That concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, we've got enough staff here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do the commissioners have any questions? Vice Chair. <laughs> sure, maybe the applicant will have to come up or the county can come up and answer a couple of these questions. And I, John, I don't know if this is in our, what we're approving tonight or not, so bear with me. But I'm looking at, their, at the plans here. It looks like we're changing the traffic pattern here a little bit, adding a bus stop curbing but if you look at page two there you can see where the new curbing jets out um, I think page three page four shows the new striping plan which takes uh, starts I think it's about a 300 feet away from the bridge and tapers up to where the new curbing is installed right before the uh, crosswalk. So we, we end up losing, I think, 20 or so beach parking spaces there, or street parking spaces. Is that part of what we're looking at? Or are we just looking at the bridge? You're actually, the part, of the part about the bridge, you're, you're technically not looking at the bridge, the, the Coastal Commission looking at the bridge, but the crosswalk and all the accessory street improvements are all part of this CDP. Okay, so the, this new, but we're getting rid of the parking, so that's part of our, got it, okay. And maybe the county can explain why we're, actually I think, can walk us through why we're doing that. Yep. That'd be helpful. Um, the other question would be, as it relates to that specific change, what does that do for bike traffic? Are they, you know, I, I see there's like a, a, on a ramp, which I would assume would be for bike traffic that's headed south. 
um, if you ramp up real quickly there, um, I want to kind of understand that as well. That's kind of the extent of my question. Brad, did you want to take a seat and then we can just ask you questions? <laughs> yeah, I, I can address those things to in part. Okay. Um, the county is here for some specific design questions, but some of the broader questions that you've raised, I can respond to with, with Matt when you're ready. Okay. Did you want to sit down or? No. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you don't want to be in the hot seat. You want to stand up. Okay. Uh, go ahead and ask your question then in direct. Yeah. Yeah. So can you walk me through the thinking? Why, why are we changing this curb line here? and the striping and all the parking and stuff. Well, let, let me give you the overview, okay, just, and then uh, the specifics, I'll ask the staff to come up. <coughs> we're, not, we're not removing parking with the project, okay, and we're changing the alignment some. Part of the reason for some of the curb alignment there has nothing to do particularly with this project, but it has to do with a subsequent project that the council has approved, which is installing a new 14-foot wide pedestrian bike trail along Coast Highway at this location that happens to start right about where the bridge is and goes up to um, Palisades Beach Road. <coughs> so we've had to do some adjustments there um, with this project temporarily to make that work. Um, we also have phase two for that project widening uh, that we're applying for grant funds as we speak. The council is approving that. So at the next meeting, uh, we hope to take it from the bridge down to Doheny Park Road to widen what is an eight-foot sidewalk and put a 14-foot bike pedestrian trail in. <coughs> so you might, just looking at the drawings, it might be a little confusing because of that. Um, we have an existing bus stop. The bus stop shifts a little bit uh, with the project. Um, uh, and then um, your third question was dealing with. <laughs> I have a bunch of other questions now. Um, so, so just to give perhaps a, a, a little bit more background uh, uh, on the project too is that. Um, Originally, um, the city asked that the county do something with the bridge. The bridge was there uh, and it had been um, built by a developer uh, at the Surfside Inn uh, back um, <coughs> pre-incorporation with the county. Um, the bridge was not built particularly well, it would appear, which is why it's, it's falling and in need of <laughs> replacement uh, at this time or alternative. And so the city didn't accept it during incorporation. So it's been a county bridge for all this time, although it crosses uh, what is a city roadway, Coast Highway now. So the county came back to the city and to the city council and said, well, okay, um, but if we're gonna make this improvement and make this right, um, and we're talking about the Coast Highway roadway section, we want the city to take the improvement thereafter on the basis that if they built it right in the first place, the city might have taken it back and incorporated it. City Council agreed to that. City Council at their last meeting on April 9th approved the agreement that goes into the details for which the county builds the sidewalk, builds the signalized intersection, and when it's complete to the satisfaction of the city, the city will in fact take it over that crosswalk and signalized intersection. So <coughs> um, partly because of the, the timing of things, uh, ideally we might have brought it to the <laughs> Planning Commission first, but that's not the case. It's been to the City Council already for that agreement. This was the only meeting that we had and the county is anxious to drop the bridge. The bridge is under the coastal Commission's jurisdiction. The Coastal Commission, uh, since we wrote the report, <laughs> I believe, has now come in and said, yeah, drop the bridge. Or <laughs> so the county uh, um, is again interested in moving ahead with the project. Um, as, 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 uh, and so your 
charge tonight is to look at the project, which is the crosswalk and the signalized intersection portion because the Coastal Commission reserved for dropping the bridge under their jurisdiction and make a conformance determination. And if you have other specific questions on the design, the county is here with us uh, tonight to answer those specific questions on the design uh, that we've worked with city staff um, through with them to try to make sure that we have a, a safe, usable crosswalk. We have also worked with the Surfside Inn because they were the ones that originally built the bridge and we'd like to keep them happy. And so a lot of the details that we've worked out and the specific location of where the crosswalk is, uh, we've worked out with the Surfside Inn and also with the sequence of construction so we could drop the bridge and then do the crosswalk. Uh, since the county has now come in and saying, gee whiz, that bridge really needs to come down that span over the Coast Highway, it will be a little bit different sequence there. They'll put in temporary intersection lights after they drop the bridge to meet the Coastal Commission requirements to keep coastal access across there. <laughs> but because they came in with an emergency permit to drop the bridge, that's gonna come ahead of building the crosswalk, which we had planned to do first and have that all installed and then drop the bridge so you're retaining coastal access across there um, all the time for folks that are on the inland side of the roadway there. So probably a little bit more than you wanted to hear, but that maybe gives you a little bit more background of the project and kind yeah. of why we're doing this and maybe. I just wanted to add two things, things to confirm. When we say drop the bridge, it's just over the PCH portion. It's not the part over the, the rail <coughs> line, just to make sure everyone's clear on that. And second, that the, it's, a, it's an emergency CDP that has been requested by the county to the Coastal Commission that they're in receipt of and um, due to um, some situation with the, um, the condition of the bridge and that emergency CDP includes, as, as Brad mentioned, some temporary um, signals, uh, a temporary crosswalk and the action before you is for the permanent crosswalk um, that would come in at some point you know, afterward. And conditions so are Yeah, I think that I still, I, I don't understand what we're doing with this striping plan. If someone just, you said I'll Let Matt come up and talk to you about us, if, if we can get to the specific drawing that you're looking at. Excuse me. It's, I'll have, I'll open up the public hearing on this after the commissioners have asked their questions. Good evening. How you doing? I'm glad to be here with you. Um, so just for the record, these plans, we don't like reading them either. Um, they're very complicated. There's a lot on them. I'll just try to, you know, narrow down the striping for you. Sure, yeah. Ba for. Basically, the roadway striping plan stays the same. What you're seeing out there is the, the lanes get a little narrower on that one side as you're going south right. on Coast Highway. What you're, what you're seeing is this edge line that gets striped. Yeah. It's primarily for the traffic to know, hey, this curb's moved out, you know, this is new. Right. All the parking adjacent to that edge line will remain. Okay. So really what you're seeing, and if I could point you to the traffic signal plan, that's probably the best one, which is on sheet two of 13. Actually, that's not the traffic signal plan, but that'll do on sheet two of 13. You see how the curb in that location, it's only, I don't have the exact measurement, but. Yeah, it's just like that, I mean, I get just, it. Just that piece of curb is moving out. Right. And what Brad tried to explain earlier is that there's existing OCTA bus stops on the street. We're simply picking that OCTA bus stop and moving it to where that bulbed out curb is so that we could try to lessen the impact to parking. Because right now there's parking already reserved for the bus stop. Gotcha. There's existing bus stops on Coast Highway on both sides and parking is already reserved out for the bus stop. So we're simply picking that up and moving it to where the bulb out is. The only difference is that the bus will have to stop in that right lane and not pull into traffic. Because if we tried to stripe another red zone for the bus to pull out of traffic, they, we take out a whole bunch of parking. So we're trying to be conscious of the importance of parking in that area, which we know is very heavy all the time. 
I think that's where what I'm trying to understand is why would the crosswalk not just come straight across to the existing curb face versus what we're tapering out, we're, we're shifting traffic over. Because that's the way I read it. Maybe I'm, I'm misinterpreting then. Yeah, so. So we have this bulb out condition. Why, why that condition <coughs> versus having everyone go to the curb? It's a great question. One, one of the things you have to think about is later when that bridge span over the railroad is redone, you've got to do elevators and the footprint of that facility will change. Okay, so this is preparing for that. Preparing for got future it. things. Okay. And the other thing that Brad talked to is this 14 foot shared use path that's gonna go in. That's gotta go in front of that facility so that it safely allows the traffic to get around that future bridge. Makes sense, thank yeah. you. Okay. And do you need me to stay up here? Any other questions for me? Pro probably. Um, We're right there <laughs> if <laughs> you need Mr. Murphy, do you have any questions? <laughs> I, I lost it. That's getting fascinating. Uh, do you want me to go to Mr. McCann and then come back? Or? No, we're fine. Oh, <laughs> this is, might be for the county. I don't know. But I would assume that OC Public Works Department is handling the CCC, the, the Coastal Commission, or that they've already done that. Okay. Yes. And what is the, now that we have this division of, of work, I mean, in terms of who, the city's now engaged in the crosswalk, that kind of thing, does that include like ADA issues too? Matt, we can go ahead and, and respond to that, but yes, we would look at all of those sorts of things. Right, so one of, one of the advantages with the crosswalk is that ADA is met you can get people safely across the street that have disabilities that can now use this at grade crossing that's signalized that stops all the traffic for them. Um, that's one of the great advantages of, of that whole project that's before you. Um, with the bridge right now, there's no elevators, there's no disabled access. So that was part, part of the conversation that we had with the county since 2012, 2011 on this. Um. I'm assuming that there will be a traffic management plan prepared. Who is taking the lead on that? Is the, is the county doing that? Is the city doing that? Is this on the, just for the demolition? Is that, yes. okay. Um, since I spent most of my day on that today, <laughs> um, it's a joint partnership between county staff that's here, um, Regina and Nikki and Larry is the design team that's here with you tonight. Um, we are gonna partner on that. One of the people that isn't here is your county traffic engineer. Um, he, he and I are gonna sit down after a meeting we have Wednesday with the contractor trying to understand the approach on the demo and then we will lay out the whole traffic management plan and outreach plan for the project, which is gonna happen quickly. So we will be all over that, uh, trust me. Right, because I, so, so I, I sense there's a good, good dialogue going between the city and the county. I don't know, Regina, how many times did we talk today? At least <laughs> probably 10, friend, 10 huh? times. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, there is. Okay, thank you. Commissioner McCann. Thank you. Matt, don't bother sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few quick questions, I guess, and then maybe digging a little bit into Vice Chair's question. How lo so how long, when do you envision th the, this project commencing? far as the demo, because it sounds like the Coastal Commission's already approved the project before us, the demo, is that? I'm not sure if they've issued the emergency CDP. I know that they have received the application. I do know that they are interested in the result of this, um, this hearing as well. So just to elaborate on that, um, and we, we got this stuff as of Friday at six and then more copies today, so this all happened very fast, but they have issued an emergency permit. It was signed today by the county. It gives them 30 days to demolish the bridge and uh, head through this process on the temporary signal. So it, to answer your question, the timing is very quick. Okay, so there's, the emergency permit. there's some equipment out there over on the beach side. Is that for this demo or? Okay, that's unrelated. Uh, unrelated, that's related to the state beach and other, um, shore protection type jobs that they're doing. Okay. Um, 
I see on the plans it talks about advanced notification. I assume that's talking about like early warning signs for the signal for the motoring public, not public outreach with information. Is that that's what we're talking about, right? So there's, are you talking about the conditions now of this? Well, somewhere in this, I saw a talk about advanced notification. I think it was on in the plans. Um, the, the, the answer to that is yes. Okay, thanks. So the, 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 and, and the intent there is to have something that's getting out there ahead of you that's warning you you're coming up on this crosswalk. Okay, yeah. And w I, I'm wondering if there'll be additional temporaries because I know a lot of times when you install a new signal and people aren't used to it, they kind of don't even see it and just go through and that would really endanger people in the crosswalk. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we're sensitive to the fact that there has been no crossing there now, and you're going to have to spend a, a long time with the public out there letting them know that they will now have to stop when the signal comes. And, you know, you got a red signal there, but some of them, people have been crossing there for many years without it. So um, not only are we looking for permanent advance warning that you're coming up, but also something that's on a temporary basis that's even more alerting the public to the fact that, oh, something's changed here. Okay, perfect, thank you. So <coughs> back to the Vice Chair's question. It looks to me like the curb is jutting out approximately 300, 300 linear feet along the roadway. So are you saying that there's a, you're saying that there's an existing bus stop there with some no parking in that general vicinity already, and now the bus will be stopping in the right travel lane, so we won't have additional no parking, but where this lane skinnies up, that whole length will be no parking. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, out of curiosity, do we know how, how many feet the existing no parking is for the bus stop? I don't have a measurement tonight. I, I can't say with certainty. I, okay. Yeah. So th the, I don't know if this is appropriate and if, if it's not, you get me back on track, but you brought it up <laughs> or someone did, Brad. <laughs> um, there's a larger project to connect down to the Palisades intersection. So, that will widen, create a pedestrian bike trail. Okay, so that I guess presumes the moving of a curb and gutter further into the roadway to create that space. Does that mean that's gonna eliminate parking uh, in that vicinity or? It's a good question and the answer is no. We have sufficient roadway width there to allow for an incursion of curb and gutter out into the roadway and still retain the parking all along there. In okay. fact, we may gain some parking down towards Beach Road also with the project, um, with the, with the um, our uh, widening project. Okay, and that, and that project is seeking grant funding? No, no, that one has grant funding um, for the stretch of roadway between the bridge there and Beach Road. So we're, <coughs> we're in the final design phase and heading out to construction. The council's already approved funding for it. So we'll anticipate that we're doing that early next year, the actual construction. The middle of 2017. Middle of 2017. Okay, thank you. I have no more questions. So let me get this straight. The, the county is going to keep one side of the bridge and they're gonna take it our side off. It, this is only phase one of a two-phase project, okay? Originally, the county had sufficient money to do phase one, and they haven't had quite sufficient uh, funding yet to do phase two. Phase two happens to be more expensive by quite a bit because their, the bridge span will be replaced and elevators will be put in as it goes over the railroad. The um, railroad won't allow an at-grade crossing like we're able to allow on Pacific Coast Highway at that location. I mean, frankly, I'm outraged that 
um, that the county is doing this to us. <laughs> is that, you know, that they're going to put an elevator, you know, on, on their side and do whatever they want, uh, you know, make a bridge. And then for our side, it's like, oh, well, tough. You're going to have to create this very unsafe condition of um, creating this, you know, flashing lights, which are going to bother the neighbors up on top of the hill. And people are going to have to cross uh, a very busy street, uh, well, well, highway, not even a street. And I don't understand why they're not extending the bridge or why they're not working with the city to allow us to, or, you know, to build a bridge. I mean, obviously, all this curb cuts and striping and flashing lights, I mean, that's going to cost us the city money to do. I mean, I'm, am I the only person <laughs> in this room thinking that why don't we build, well, first of all, why doesn't the county build the bridge and uh, on th the whole side. I mean, I, I'm almost speechless <laughs> that, it, that they're doing this to us. I mean, in, in, I'm sorry, I know I kind of left that open, but you know, there's people cross PCH all the time and get hit by, by cars up in you know, Laguna. There's a stretch of road there where people jaywalk and they get hit. Now, obviously, that's a different condition, but it is an issue. It, this is a very unsafe condition. And, and even you take the safety whole thing out, nobody's, you know, has given me a reason why the bridge is being taken down. I mean, other than that it's, it's um, you know, crumbling. I understand that. The county is kind of is being negligent and really needs to fix it. Well, a couple things that I would say. One is that that decision was made previously by the city council. Um, so at this point, we're not, um, and the city council had that discussion at their meeting on April 19th and voted for the project with the crosswalk as it is. Um, we have people that are crossing the roadway today because they don't want to go on the bridge. People cross there, particularly from Olamendi's. And if we don't put something for them to cross safely at grade, that will continue to happen across there. That's part of the reason that the crosswalk was selected to be closer to the Olamendi side, uh, so that when you've got that there and you have residents that are crossing and, and bicyclists and things like that, that you have that capability there. Um, from a taxpayer standpoint, it's considerably less expensive to do the project um, at that uh, with a crosswalk than it is to do a bridge and then maintain the bridge from both parties because remember it's not just the county that's building it, but the city is going to take it over and maintain it in the future. So the feeling was that we can make a safe crossing there and that it will be a fully signalized intersection. Uh, I, we don't put the, um, the crosswalks that they put in in Laguna by Caltrans, which particularly during daylight hours at times is very hard to see. Um, we have um, many, many signals across PCH in the city of Dana Point and knock on wood, we haven't had anybody hit in a crosswalk on PCH in Dana Point with many of our existing signals. And this will be the same type of traffic signal that you see on other locations, not only in Dana Point, but in other cities as well as a fully signalized intersection. So I understand that, um, you know, you, know, you, you um, would deem that to be um, a, um, uh, that you'd, you might prefer to take an elevator and go up and go across. Many people don't. Um, um, but um, at this point, um, that's, that's where we're at today with the project. So the uh, city is going to have to pay to maintain the elevator and all of that on uh, the other part of the bridge? That has not been decided at this point in time. That phase two has not been agreed upon in terms of details between the council and the county of Orange at this time. Wow. 
Okay. Um, now, um, as far as time to cross this um, walkway, um, to, uh, crosswalk, how much time is it um, going to, uh, as a vehicle will have to stop and wait for how long? Do you know the exact timing on that? So I don't know the exact timing, but uh, crosswalks in California, there's several ways that that can be done by law. We do it by, we did a study to determine how quick our community was walking because the current standard says you have to use three and a half foot feet per second for every foot you cross in the amount of time that you need. So when we program traffic signals, we have to put a certain amount of time in there. It's based on the distance, so say you have 100 foot. We actually have a community that walks way faster than most communities, so we actually did a study and we're able to justify four foot, four feet per second, and that's the number we use. So say in a 100 foot span, you would need 25 seconds of time to get that person across. These plants are way too small for me to measure right now and give you an exact number, but that's generally the criteria we will use to put the timing in the traffic signal, just like every other traffic signal in Dana Point. Okay, that's all my questions for now. Any other questions? No? All right, then thank you. I'll open up the public hearing and if we have any um, requests. Uh, David, looks like Manu. Hi, my name is David Mann. I live uh, 34665 Camino Capistrano. I sort of can see the uh, bridge there. And I'm here because I'm very disturbed that I went through these documents and I saw environmental impacts. I didn't see human impacts on here and measurements of traffic impacts and how pedestrians would be impacted. For 25 years, I've watched Pacific Coast Highway, particularly on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, where cars are streaming and going quickly. And uh, you know, the Coast Highway, it's the freeway is backed up. So they try to take the Coast Highway and it appears to me that saving money is ahead of saving lives. And I'm extremely concerned that there wasn't any detailed study from, from the documents I read. Maybe there's other documents about traffic patterns by cars on those busy times and um, by um, pedestrians. Also, I just heard the planning commission was bypassed and it was directly sent to council to make this decision. I don't deal in uh, public situations like this, but it doesn't make sense to me why that happened. It appears that the, si the county wants to uh, just get rid of this problem quickly and leave the liability and lives to the city of Dana Point. So I'm pretty much outraged when I sit here and listen to this even more. I'm concerned about lives of people, and I watch people use that all the time. So uh, it seems like uh, someone planned a project, let's do it, and didn't really gather the correct data to figure what's going on, what would be in the best uh, lives of our citizens here. So I'm pretty outraged, and I'm glad to hear that, April, you, you were seeing the same way that I was seeing this. It looks like we're putting the cart before the horse and not gathering enough information. And I can tell you there's going to be screeching brakes, uh, and people are going to be hit and hurt just because we haven't thought this through, and um, you know they're just looking at, at it from a financial point of view. In the long run, it, there's going to be suits, believe me. So that's my say, and we need to think this through. I don't know uh, if you are supposed to make a recommendation when the horse is already out of the barn. I don't know why you're even here from what I just heard as a city council. And that's what I have to say. Thank you. Uh, anyone else to speak? I'm, I'm just wondering if one of the county people wanted to maybe address um, the reasoning behind um, why it's not being carried across. <laughs> uh, I guess one of the, I'm from uh, Public Works 
uh, Road and Bridge. Um, my name is Eugenia, and thanks for having me here. Um, one of the reasons is that Surfside actually had a lot of input early on. Um, this bridge was built for them originally, and they actually had a lot of contention, like even putting the bridge where it is or replacing it, blocking their view. Um, so that was one of the things that we had to deal with. And another thing was like if we put the elevator or any kind of new foundation on their side, we would be taking a lot of their easement. Um, and we actually had to deal with them for the past two years trying to get an easement done. And they actually are not granting one to us. And so the last month or so, we had to change our design and had to work with scg and &E to make new power sources like in different locations in order to accommodate them. So we try to work with them since we are providing access, but they are one of the, I guess, main driving forces on, on the design of this. So. Well, thank you. That actually answered my question. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any questions for her? Okay. Yeah, I'm sure <coughs> there um, was just a couple things I wanted to just make you aware of. And one, um, the city council is the body that has the ability to bind the city in agreements. So I just want to be clear that it was not the CDP that went before the city council. It was an agreement with another public entity, which is you know within their purview to see. The coastal development permit is coming before this body. You are the appropriate body to hear that. Um, in fact, you are the final decision-making body under our code on that decision, um, unless it's appealed. Uh, there are a number of safety considerations um, that you all have brought to light and have been discussed this evening, but there's one that hasn't been talked about that I just want to make sure that you and the public are aware of, and that's the fact that this bridge is falling. There's a report that indicates its, its shelf life is, is near, which is why the Coastal Commission, they don't issue emergency coastal development permits without having a, you know, a valid reason of an emergency and that that could be very dangerous as well. If a piece were to fall and hit a car that is driving, um, that could be a very serious um, problem and injury and opportunity for injury as well. So I just wanted you to be aware of, um, there are a number of considerations that have been discussed as um, part of this project. Thank you. Um, I'll close the public hearing and then ask the commissioners if they wanna, they wanna start. <laughs> Commissioner McCann. Okay, the, my fellow commissioners and, and, and some of the information provided by staff have raised a lot more questions in my mind. <coughs> um, and I guess I'll preface my comments by saying I don't, I agree it sounds like the cart is before the horse and I'm, I'm not quite sure, you know, what, what we are doing <laughs> or why we're here or, or you know, I don't necessarily want to vote against the, the, you know, the council's already, you know, weighed in on their proposed direction for the project. So I'm not wanting to spearhead a big effort against that. But there are a lot of questions. In fact, what Regina from the county said, you know, it made it sound like Seaside Inn is driving the bus here, and kind of what they want as far as, you know, um, not impacting their views, improving their views. And, you know, with respect to spacing and stuff, if it was purely a spacing issue, we're moving the curb lane in like 12 feet on the west side of the road. We <coughs> could easily push the striping over and put an elevator in on that side, even if they weren't granting an easement. So I don't buy that as a valid thing, and I am very upset if Seaside Inn is basically driving the bus here. Um, it, you know, it sounds like little consideration of, of kind of others involved. Um, I have a, a question for staff. Do we have any um, accident rates, uh, accident information along that stretch of road, either pedestrian or, or other types of accidents? We don't have anything specific uh, in terms of account for you. We don't have much in the way of accidents along that stretch of highway. So while, while, while there are undoubtedly some people that are crossing at the street level, mm -hmm. 
they're they're not a significant have, they, number or pattern of accidents relative to them. That's correct at this point. I mean, we have um, plenty of evidence that people are crossing the roadway without going up over the bridge today. Um, but we haven't had a pedestrian uh, fatality along that stretch of roadway um, in the time that I've been here over the last almost 12 years this point and I have not heard of anything on that stretch of roadway even prior to arrival here so um, w the, the the roadway along there tends to be um, um, not well utilized as a four-lane roadway in terms of volume of traffic you could easily get by with traffic volumes with a single lane in both directions um, by putting one of the questions that you might have is, gee whiz, you're putting a signal in there, and is that slowing the traffic down? And the answer is yes, it will be activated by pedestrians. It will also be activated by cars exiting the Surfside Inn. So you will be um, causing the light to turn at some times, much less frequently than a typical traffic signal would um, in that stretch. Um, but you also, when it comes to the traffic that you have that builds up from the freeway, um, you're skinning it down to one lane at the next intersection anyway because you have one lane in both directions only once you hit Beach Road. So you aren't um, reducing the throughput of the roadway, particularly by the addition of the traffic signal there for as the gentleman pointed out, when we do have uh, some times when the, tr the freeway is congested, where we have people using this as an alternative route. Um, and we're hopeful that as they complete the diamond lane on the five, that will reduce some of that traffic impact uh, as they're widening the freeway there. Thank you. Um. I don't understand what the urgency is on the p on the part of the Coastal Commission. If it was truly in, you know, falling down disrepair, I could understand us having a concern about stuff dropping onto our our any travelers below. But I, from a Coastal Commission perspective, I don't I don't understand why they're in such an emergency condition. Um, and I don't know if someone wants to re address that or not or knows the answer to that. Is our decision here tonight appealable to council? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so with that said, there's some things I like about it and there's some things I don't like um, and I'll just run through them and kind of leave them out there. Um, I like that the that the signal is going to be at the driveway to the seaside end because, you know, the more that that looks like a real intersection and not just a ped crossing only, the the better you know compliance I think we'll have on stopping and people will get more used to reasons to stop. Um, I I like and want to emphasize that I think we extra advanced warnings to the maximum extent possible um, are a good and necessary idea. Um, if, if anybody thinks that <coughs> um, the elevators are going to, you know, do well out there in the sea air after it's eaten up the concrete bridge, that <laughs> um, they need to think about that. Um, I don't like the bus stopping in the travel lane. I don't like the narrower, it sounds like with the future striping that the lane will become narrower and the parking lane combination, so it'll just be harder to park there and you know more dangerous as a result. I don't like the pedestrian exposures down, you know, having an at grade crossing. And like I said, I don't understand the urgency. With all that being said, I guess I'm kind of up in the air as to what to do. I, I if council's already taken a firm direction on it, I I don't see, you know, going against that, but um, I could be swayed. Vice Chair? <laughs> oh, I'd love to see you outraged. That was good. <laughs> I don't think so. 
was the first time it I think only I've happens seen you that like way. twice was, a year. Uh, so that was, <laughs> it was an interesting moment. There you got tongue tied. Yeah, um, it's a tough situation. I, I uh, I'm not swayed by what the council's done to this point. I, you know what they've done is what they've done, um, and I came here tonight with much different thought than I where I'm tonight at the moment after hearing staff answer some of my questions and address some of my design concerns. I, I think, you know, these are these are difficult changes and change is a hard thing, it, but it's a necessary thing, especially in the business of uh, streets and bridges and uh, community plans and, you know, things have to change uh, or they fall apart. And, and this is a great example of, you know, somebody who was responsible for the bridge uh, didn't take care of it. It is what it is. Uh, you know, the bridge is going to come down whether we like it or not. And we need something that's going to get these people from one side of the street to the other safely. And it's not going to be with the county building them a new bridge. So um, the devil's always in the details. I think, um, like I said, staff did a good job helping me understand a little bit more as to why we were doing some of the things we're doing. I don't necessarily like all of them, uh, but I understand them. I'm looking at a picture here of Coast Highway on the north side, and it has uh, no parking, and it has no travel lane. It has two, two travel lanes. So you know, the condition that we're going to have at the end of this is going to be better than, than where it is today, uh, and we won't have the risk of a bridge falling on somebody's head. So um, for that reason, uh, I'm going to support this uh, going forward. Yeah, th this is an interesting s sequence of issues. Um, and again, the, as we've all recognized, the council has the priority to make these decisions. Uh, and, I, and I think we all certainly take pause with what our gentleman speaker brought up about the traffic patterns, and, and that's always a concern for us. But that's not what we're textually, we've been asked to do today. Um, our task is different, and I, I get the sense that that bridge is coming down regardless of whether we at Dana Point put in a crosswalk or not. I mean, the county, it sounds like the county has made a decision and they're being forced to make a decision because of the, the quality of that bridge right now. Um, so we have to just, in my opinion, look at it all and think what can we do now to try to move this thing forward in the best way. Um, so, I, and, and based on the plans we've seen, and, and I, I do have some concerns about having um, all these, these, the sidewalks changed and, and the, the routes that we're so used to, people are used to going down the street but we all adjust to that. But to me, it seems that our issues are, is the proposal consistent with the city's general plan local coastal program? Is the proposal compatible with an enhancement to the surrounding neighborhood? And does the project satisfy all the findings required pursuant to the city's zoning code? And that's what I'm looking at. So I will support it. Uh, what did the city council actually approve? Uh, my understanding was it was just an agreement. It wasn't the actual uh, tearing down of that portion of the bridge. I think Brad's been more involved in um, those negotiations, so I'll ask him to answer that question. Um, the council approved the agreement with the county that in exchange for the county putting in the crosswalk on the signalized intersection that the city would um, maintain that and take it over when the project is complete. So the, and, and there, uh, there was previous correspondence between the city and the county that um, agreed to this concept um, several years ago and we had previously gone to the Coastal Commission as the city to see whether they would accept this project concept. So I think um, the concept of doing the crosswalk signalized intersection versus the bridge has already been established. 
whether you as the planning commission felt there were issues with the crosswalk and signalized intersection that needed to change. That's, um, you know, and some of the comments that you had or addressed those things tonight. But um, in terms of the concept of changing from a bridge to a crosswalk, I think the council has clearly indicated that that's the route that they um, are um, willing and want to go. Is that, is, is that I well, mean, I, 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 you they, know, they, they, I didn't, they didn't get the CDP <laughs> and they didn't get the specifics that says that the crosswalk is here at the driveway and we did not go through the design parameters like we've gone through with the CDP project with you tonight. And um, the, that vote uh, came down at, what was the split on that vote? That was a three to two with the new council. The previous correspondence had gone back with the full council approval, with the previous council. It took a number, a couple, three years for the uh, county to get the money and complete the design and come in with the actual uh, follow-on project at this point. So time passed and we had a change of seating of the city council during that period. Okay, thank you. And we had two new council members who felt the way that we do. Right. <laughs> thank you. Um, Chairwoman O'Connor, if I could make a suggestion, um, I'd like to take a quick recess if that's okay with you. Um, I am not aware of whether or not I've reviewed that agreement. I certainly don't remember the terms off the top of my head. I'd like to take a quick look, see what it says. I have a couple ideas in mind as to potential solutions to the quandary might be in here, but I'd like to make sure that I cross my T's and dot my I's before I do that. Well, I, I think that's a good idea because we've been going for almost two hours, so um, <laughs> we'll take a, what, 10 minute? 10 minute, 10 break. minute break, thank you.
All right. Um, thank you for everybody for staying. Um, we're open, reopening the meeting. It's 8.10, um, coming back from recess. So sorry about that. Um, I wanted to take some time to look over the agreement, as I mentioned, also the emergency CDP. I think as you probably have already discovered tonight, this project is really unusual by the fact that we have so many agencies involved. You have the Coastal Commission, who frankly is changing its mind up until the very last moment. Um, you have the county, and then you have the city as well. And because of the changes at the Coastal Commission level, some parts of the project have probably moved forward before others. Um, with respect to the agreement, um, the agreement basically says that the city and the county are going to work together in different ways, provide funding in different ways, et cetera. Um, the agreement can't bind your decision to approve or disapprove. You're free to do whatever you want, and if that gets appealed and the council decides otherwise, that's totally up to them. Um, I was looking into some options in terms of whether or not um, you would have the ability to either refer the application up to the city council, which we've done before, um, or continue the item. And unfortunately, because of all the timing uh, issues associated with the emergency CDP, when the bridge has to come down, when the crosswalk has to go in, unfortunately, we really just need you to make a decision tonight, up or down, and then we'll deal with it from there. But we're really constrained in terms of timing. Um, continuance probably won't work um, because of the constraints that the Coastal Commission's put on us. So that's where we stand. Um, I was hoping to have some more options for you, but <laughs> sometimes no options are, are all we have. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Commissioner McCann, do you, do, you, do you have any further comments or that was all? Other, otherwise, I'll move on down the line. I, I guess I, I just have a quick question. You know, I, I think I've had a little bit of chance to focus more and I appreciate the comments of the others. Do you find, um, Ms. Luna Reynosa, um, in your opinion, does this project, as proposed, the Coastal Development Permit, um, strictly comply with the zoning code? Well, it's a public works project. It's a public project. And okay. so public projects don't have to, the zoning code is for private development. It governs the rules of private development. But because it's in the coastal zone and it's a public works project, it does require a coastal development permit. And yes, I think we can make the finding for the coastal development permit. Okay, thank you. So I guess with um, that being said, uh, I would be in support of the project. Uh, Vice Chair. Yeah, I just, I mean, I think, it just, I guess, and I said it earlier, these changes are tough and they're hard and they're necessary. And if I take all of the history that, that has occurred <coughs> before tonight away, including the bridge not being there, and I just look at this solely from what's being proposed, again, not including the bridge, we're, we're approving an intersection. So there's vehicular traffic that's going to be coming in and out of um, the Surfside Inn, and when those vehicles come in and out, there'll be an opportunity for pedestrians to use the crosswalk. But it's not just a crosswalk, and I think that's part of the confusion, you know, when I first looked at this is it was all centered around this crosswalk, but it's actually an intersection in my mind. And if the bridge wasn't there today, I don't know that we would have the lengthy discussions that would happen today. We would probably just approve it and move on. Um, and that's, that's kind of where I sit is I, I'm in support of it. Um, I, as I said earlier, I came here with a different idea, and, I've, my, and staff has walked me through many things, and, I, and I'm not uh, making a decision because the council made a decision, because I think this is actually good. Um, that bridge needs to either be completely redone or removed. So um, with that, I'm in support tonight. Commissioner Murphy. I remain in support. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> One of the Planning Commission's jobs is to find um, a balance between public benefit and, and uh, private good. And what I'm hearing is that the driving force behind the, um, the crosswalk versus the bridge is um, the Surfside Inn, and that the Surfside Inn doesn't want to give up their private property for uh, an easement to build 
or to allow this other portion of the bridge. So what I'm hearing is that um, their needs uh, or their private property rights are being held m superior to uh, the public benefit, uh, public safety. And I know, I mean, uh, we can have all sorts of experts come up here and say, you know, um, crosswalks are safe and, um, you know, uh, if you signal them correctly. But, you know, obviously, <coughs> if you have a choice between two things, what is safer, obviously, the bridge is safer. safer. And I'm not convinced that city council um, felt that tearing down the bridge was the best way to go. Um, I watched the city council meeting and um, there were some questions from uh, uh, the mayor uh, pro tem and, um, and the mayor regarding the um, doing this by tearing down the bridge. So uh, I'm not convinced that city council is convinced that this is the right way to go. And um, I'm, I don't understand why uh, the city, if we're not getting any benefit from you know, a, a bridge and we have to pay to um, put in a crosswalk, why we're, it's still up in the air as to who is going to be paying for maintenance of the other side uh, of a bridge that really isn't helping us very much. It's only doing half its job. <coughs> so um, I'm opposed and uh, I, I think this is a really bad idea. I don't understand why we can't, you know, um, I, I understand why the bridge is falling down, it's in disrepair, it needs to be fixed, let's fix it. I mean, no one really gave me a reason other than, you know, Surfside Inn didn't want it. Um, no one provided me with a reason why we should, you know, we shouldn't as a city, you know, do something and maybe, you know, do the other part of the bridge. So, um, those are my reasons <laughs> for being opposed. Um, I don't think I've persuaded anyone to my side, so you might as well um, make a motion. Like I was expecting a little bit more, you know, I think this I, is I, I try to we could celebrate the first time we don't all agree on things. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm Italian, 100% Italian, and it's really hard to keep my temper sometimes, but, you know, I manage. Yeah, I, I think you make great points, and I think, um, you know, with those great points, we also have an obligation to protect people who do need to cross there, and since we're stuck in between what is sort of a rock and a hard place, <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we approve. CDP 14-0016 for an at grade fully signalized pedestrian crosswalk and intersection in the vicinity of the Surfside Inn at 34680 Coast Highway. Uh, Vice Chair made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. And Commissioner Murphy seconded. Please register your votes. All right, that motion passes uh, with three in favor and myself opposed. We will move on to, after that exciting uh, <laughs> item number, we will move on to, let's see, item six. For a coastal development permit CDP 15-0022, site development permit SDP 15-0038, and sign program permit SPP 16-0002 to demolish an existing freestanding commercial building, previously Dana Party Supplies, and construct a new 5,997 square foot commercial building, AutoZone, within an existing Doheny Village commercial shopping center 
in the Community Commercial Vehicular Zoning District at 34061 Doheny Park Road. Ms. Luna Reynosa is there a staff report on item six. Yes, John Tilton will give the staff report and uh, I'm glad to see that our applicant is still here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. As you said, this is a coastal development permit for a brand new building and this is the first really significant project uh, in Doheny Village that we've had in quite a long time. As you know, we're embarking on a uh, Doheny Village plan, uh, and uh, while we're still little ways off from that, um, we're excited about potential changes that could happen in Doheny Village. Uh, at this point, we need to apply the current standards, um, development standards that apply in this area. I think everyone can remember uh, party time, uh, party time, not party time liquor, uh, party supplies. <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> it's party time. Um, Dana Point Party Supplies, everyone goes there to buy uh, balloons, right, for birthday parties. Um, but unfortunately, they've gone out of business, and the building's been vacant for a while. And the property owner, the shopping center where the Big Five is and the Dollar Tree, uh, they um, have this uh, pad um, available for lease and uh, Do, uh, AutoZone has uh, entered in a preliminary lease with uh, the owner and they're going to demolish this building and build a brand new purpose-built building um, for their business. Uh, when they first came in, we were very concerned that the, uh, was the design would be too formulaic as a typical AutoZone building, which we thought maybe wouldn't be of the quality that we would want in Doheny Village, and so I, we have to commend the AutoZone and the designers that they've worked with staff to create a building that is uh, not only unique, I think, to most AutoZones, but would be an asset to uh, Doheny Village. Uh, it is roughly the same um, size, a little bit bigger than the former party supply business. It's right at the boundary of the city with San Juan Capistrano. Uh, this building right here is the uh, staples from the, in the San Juan Camp Capistrano shopping center. These some pictures of Dana Party Supplies as it exists today. The building, as I said, will be demolished. It's roughly the same footprint. And they will be doing site improvements in all their lease area to bring it up to code to current water water quality standards, landscaping standards, parking lot standards, landscaping in the parking lot, all of this uh, will comply with the code and bring it up to date for this corner of the shopping center. The building, um, initially AutoZone wanted, uh, it was very important that the side of the building that faces the parking lot have a very prominent entry. Um, we were concerned that because we want eventually uh, Doheny Park Road to become more pedestrian friendly uh, and, and relate to Doheny Park Road, we, uh, they agreed to create a frontage also that includes a lot of uh, storefront glass, awnings, um, an entryway that is for pedestrians directly off of the sidewalk along Doheny Park Road. Um, this is a view uh, from what is essentially an alley between the building and Staples. And then this is the back of the building which would face the shopping center, the back uh, parking lot. Uh, the, as I said, landscaping, they'd be providing landscaping at the front of the building on Doheny Park Road. They'll need to provide some additional landscaping in the, uh, for water quality reasons. And here, uh, there's a minimum amount of uh, trees that would be required in the parking lot. They're exceeding that. Uh, their property line is really right here where I'm drawing the cursor. And this is an unimproved section of dirt <laughs> along the alley 
that technically belongs to the shopping center next door, but they've agreed as long as they can get approval from that shopping center to improve that. So that would improve that, especially as you're coming down uh, Doheny Park Road and looking at this corner would be really an improvement in that area. Again, the building elevations, um, there are three entitlements that are required, three permits. One, a coastal development permit for a new structure. A site development permit is the second permit because it's more than 2,000 square feet of commercial floor area. And then a third permit would be a signed program. Uh, they have, they are only proposing two signs. Um, obviously, AutoZone, their standard uh, typeface. And uh, this is an internally lit sign, although it's a high, high quality sign with raised lettering. Um, it would not be uh, a translucent letter. These are aluminum letters. They are red, but the lighting is backlit. So this is what it would look like on the um, sign facing the parking lot. And then facing Doheny Park Road, they have there will be a unique vertical sign, which is echoes a little bit some of the signs, including El Patio, Lucy's El Patio sign, which has that type of vertical sign. We thought this would be a nice addition to to this um, building. Um, in addition, they have these cantilevered, dark gray um, awnings, metal awnings that would uh, shade the structure. And then on this corner right here, at the corner of the alley and PCH, they've got some lattice work to uh, for landscaping to grow up on this side of the building here. The sign on the uh, Duhuni Park side, the vertical sign, would be internally lit. And again, it's vertical. And it's kind of a unique sign for, for that um, for that um, for that business. Although we encourage them to do that. Uh, typically, this sign that projects from the building is limited to only nine square feet under the code, and that's why it needs a signed program. Signed programs are, are allowed when in cases when you want to deviate from the strict standards in order to create increased visibility maybe, or even to do um, something that's slightly unusual because of the environment that you're in in Doheny Village. We thought it was appropriate to allow that and it's uh, the, our recommendation that um, the building itself and the signage be approved. Uh, the materials are going to be, it, it is a concrete block building, but it will be stuccoed uh, with plaster, uh, three different colors of plaster. Uh, there will be a stone ledger, which is a cultured stone, but it looks it's pretty high quality. I don't think you'd be able to tell it's not real stone unless you're right on it. Uh, lots of glazing. These windows will be relatively deep set. And here's a detail of the cornice at the roof. Here's a detail of the type of awning that would, they would have. And as designed, the project complies with all of the standards other than that uh, deviation with the one vertical sign, which does require approval of the Planning Commission. If you have any questions, I'm available. Madam Chair, if I may, before we conclude the staff report, just add that I really appreciated the applicants uh, working with us on this building. Um, as John mentioned, we are looking at the conventional code that's in place right now, but as you all are all aware, we are doing a lot of work on the new form-based code that we hope will, in the not too distant future, govern development in this area. And one of the things that we've learned from the form-based code is that one of the primary um, tenets behind that is that a building is built and it lasts 100 years. And a use, I mean, maybe AutoZone will be there for 100 years, but typically um, there is a, a turnover of uses within a building. And so the form-based code is very interested in that form of that building so that it can transition from use to use. And we really appreciate AutoZone working with us on that. We took um, some of those um, 
theories and applied it to our conventional zoning. Um, and in particular, while AutoZone probably will not use that entrance off of Doheny Park Road, and they certainly wanted to orient their building toward the parking lot, which is more of a suburban form of development that you know, is in place at, the, at time right now, but moving forward, that's not the form of development that the Doheny um, Village plan is anticipating. We appreciate the ability for this building over time to transition into more of that um, kind of urban walkable village that um, that plan envisions. Um, so with that, I just wanted to again thank the applicant. Uh, we think that this will be a, um, a definite improvement and an asset to the area. And certainly uh, we do know that uh, this um, auto retail use, that there is some leakage um, from our community. Uh, so the, the use will be definitely uh, good for the, for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions? Vice Chair? Yes, <laughs> I'm busy tonight. Yeah, you are, you, and you're really fast I on know. that button. Sorry, no, I'll, go, I'll go last. <laughs> I have a couple questions. I, I know the applicants here, maybe they can yes, answer them. So we're doing an automotive use in a pedestrian-oriented neighborhood. I'm just being, I'm just joking. <laughs> Te technically, it's funny. a retail. It's a retail use. No okay, auto yeah. repair re allowed. I'm just trying to be funny here. Lighten up the mood a bit. Um, the site plan. I was looking at the way that the site was reoriented, and it feels sort of kind of cut off from the rest of the shopping center. I'm sure there's reasoning behind it. Uh, maybe the applicant can walk us through that. But if you look at the original layout of the site, you know, vehicles could come in and out mainly off of that driveway off the alley area and now the way it's being rebuilt you kind of get cut off there with a the curb um, you know I don't want to redesign the site so it's more of a my own uh, commentary than anything else there is one thing though that um, um, I'll just put out there and that is on the northern elevation that corner seems really bare and that's really our entry into the Doheny village and what I, you know, and I rarely talk about design, but on this specific elevation, if we can wrap that corner with something and put an awning over the door, so that at least it's got some something more than block and and stucco as the vehicles come in, that that would probably be my only comment. But I, I think it's great. I think it's nice to see somebody doing stuff in Delphine Village, and um, kind of went right into my commentary. I apologize. For that. <laughs> it's okay. Any, any volunteers? Commissioner McCann? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, I, I agree completely with respect to the parking um, layout and alignment. It kind of strands, it just cuts off that other aisle. This is, this is not a separate lot, correct? This is part of the larger parcel? It is, but it's a separate lease pad. So they have a leased area. Oh right, find. okay, but as far as parking requirements and ratios and stuff, someone could just as easily park. Uh, I would yes. personally really prefer to see that, you know, maybe those spaces on the westerly side get reoriented to, to front end facing to the north and allow that aisle to flow through, um, that's, that's my two cents on that. Um, the sign size, the primary sign size is, what are the code regarding that? Because it's 42 inches by 21 feet. That's just kind of surprised at how big that is on a relatively not High speed street. I mean, it'd be f it'd be visible from you know the whale watching boat. <laughs> <laughs> Does it need to be that big? I, I don't think it has to be that big for visibility. Uh, the code allows when you're facing a parking lot, it tr treats that side of the building as a frontage, mm -hmm. and your allowable signage is one square foot for every length of your building. The building's 100 feet long. 
So theoretically, <laughs> they're, they're way under so they what their allotment would be, but again, it's, it is a discretionary decision on your part. Okay. Uh, well, that's interesting that they're way under. Um, and it doesn't look out of size for the building facade. I was just struck at how big it is, but maybe when it's up there and you're standing 50 or 100 feet away, it won't look so big. Um, well, I think one, one thing that, that I'll say that we had some concerns about that as well, but especially at night when they were lit, but they're going to be halo lit on that side, so right. we thought that was a big improvement. Yeah, that's nice. And I love the blade sign, by the way. And I love the architecture, by the way. Um, so I appreciate the applicant for making those upgrades. I'm wondering if our packet, if we're missing some of the conditions or the conditions got rewritten because the packet references some special condition number 69 and, and our conditions go up to like 63. So. Uh, on page, that's really the fourth page. Um, that one big paragraph near the top, the last sentence says, condition number 69 in the attached resolution. <laughs> and I was so interested to read that condition and <laughs> I've been losing sleep over it. <laughs> yeah. Apologize for that. I think um, that's a typo. Um, that condition is actually number 58. Thank you. Okay, makes sense. Um, and lastly, and I don't know exactly what our role is, the architecture is really, really good. It looks great. The facade that I, I thought the west elevation it maybe needed a little juice. Maybe that's because I go to Las Colandrinas too much and would walk out and see it. But it's the, that's the facade that would face their, their entire parking lot. So, um, I guess I just suggest that the applicant consider maybe um, juicing that up a little bit, but in part, I'd probably stand, you know, it's really a 360 degree building. It's not like an in inline shop that you only see the front. So um, if we don't condition that, I at least suggest they consider just a little bit of gingerbread on that. Those are my questions. I don't have any questions except I, um, I think, w was it, uh, Commissioner McCann, did you mention the parking or, or was that the vice chair orienting it a different way? Yeah, no, I think that's, there's no change either. So how, I, I, I'm not sure I understand which way you want to. Well, can I show you? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I'm saying right now this, the way they build this cuts off this and you can't go through anymore and it's mm -hmm. kind of awkward here. But if you were to eliminate these spots and, and put your one. spots there, okay, yeah, you're gonna lose that spot, but now you can go through. It's kind of easier. Instead of having two dead ends, mm -hmm. you have one through. And the net result is you probably lose a spot or something, but it flows better. Okay, so John, was there a reason why they um, you planning suggested um, planning planning did not suggest this particular orientation it was the this applicant driven other than though the water quality management plan did require and luckily Matt Kunk is here he might know a little bit more about that but they had to work with our water quality staff to create this layout uh, and so that may have driven some of this. Um, but that's not to say it couldn't be redesigned. Okay. Um, that, that large triangle you see that's landscaped yes. on the lower left corner? Yes. That's a, 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 how would you refer to that? 
it's a biofiltration planter for the parking lot. For the, at the low po and it's at the low point of the land. For the, the entire land. parking lot or just, just this for their park? area, for ah. their lease area. Okay. Um, any other questions for staff at this point? Uh, otherwise, I'll um, open up the public hearing and maybe the applicant can address some of these um, issues as well. Okay. Uh, Rob Writing. Hello, good evening. Um, my name is Rob Radine. work for Terramar Engineering. Uh, I'm here representing AutoZone. Um, the parking lot orientation, it's all due to stormwater quality. We have to capture all the water on our site and treat the portion that we're responsible for before allowing it to leave the site. So that's what drove that whole curb across that side. The whole shopping center drains towards that way and then there's a V gutter that runs along the, the um, front of the major strip center. So that's, that's what drove that. Um, the site plan was put together by AutoZone, so that was what drove that parking layout. I think it generated more parking spaces, so that's why they chose to adopt that layout. Um, the signage, all retail stores would like as much signage as they could possibly get. Um, I think that's kind of an industry standard. Um, is, is there another question that you guys might have? Did you have a question regarding the? It was more of a, uh, yeah, the question regarding that north elevation and adding. Uh, AutoZone does all their own elevations and they've worked very diligently with staff, uh, with John and Terry. And by the way, they've been great to work with and they have been absolutely wonderful and they've worked diligently to get us here and we're very grateful for that. AutoZone's looking forward to be a great community neighbor and I'll, I'll take those suggestions back. John will be able to relay them better than I probably will. But um, yeah, we'll take those back and take those under advisement. So um, regarding the water quality issue, I don't, can you please explain to me is there not an alternate that we could, you know, slope the paving a little bit just to get it down in that biofiltration? I mean, it's pretty flat. You could, it seems like it'd be relatively it's easy. Actually, it's, it's not very flat at all. It, it's 4 or 5% starting to head down that slope, and uh, it's actually fairly steep. We could put a V gutter there as opposed to a curb, but I think a lot of the water would flow over the V gutter rather than to the bios, uh, biofiltration device. So do um, you do you know if if you know the applicant would be opposed to trying to you know taking no, a second look not. at reorienting that? No, no, absolutely not. I don't, I don't think anyone would be opposed to it. I mean, I think all of our hands are tied by stormwater um, regulations and requirements. I mean, we're required to trap all the water that comes onto our site and treat. Uh, our percentage and, and I'm very sympathetic and familiar with stormwater requirements so I, I'm not discounting what you're saying at all um, I would like to see at least a you know a, a relook at can we make this work and have a through traffic aisle rather than two dead ends is, okay. is my only yeah. I mean, I, we'll certainly look at that um, and it'll be up to the city and the city's outside right stormwater plan checker to approve and, that. And I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank for, you. For your uh, time spent here <laughs> throughout all of this. Um, any more public comment? No? Then I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the commissioners for discussion. Um, unless you want to make a motion with those, um, you know, with that recommendation of, you know, sure. the recommendation for the bio. Sure, I'll, I'll move, um, so in general, well, I'll move um, 
Coastal Development Permit CDP 15-0022, Site Development Permit SDP 15-0038, and Sign Program Permit SPP 16-0002 to demolish an existing freestanding commercial building previously Dana Point Dana Party Supplies and construct a new 5997 square foot commercial building auto zone within an existing Doheny Village Commercial Shopping Center in a community <coughs> commercial vehicular zoning district at 34061 Doheny Park Road with the I'd like to add the, the you know the recommendation that the applicant you know reconsider but not a requirement but reconsider and evaluate with themselves and staff um, add in some facade improvements along that northerly corner fronting Doheny Park Road the westerly elevation facing their parking lot and consideration of <coughs> reconfiguring the parking to allow through aisle And then do we need to change the report to say um, condition 58 or? No, we don't need to change the staff report. We'll just note it for the record that the staff report had a little typo. Okay. Um, I we've got the motion. Does that? Um, second. You second it? OK. We've got the motion by Commissioner McCann, seconded by Vice Chair Nelson. Please register your vote. And that motion passes four to zero. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we will move on. Oh my gosh. Let's see, where are we? Old business. There is no old business. Uh, new business. No new business. Staff report. I'd just like to announce that we will be canceling the next regularly scheduled planning commission meeting. Sorry, looking for my calendar here, which is 23rd. May 23rd. 23rd. And so we will then meet at our next regular planning commission meeting, which would be June 13th. Thank you. And then we also have a new person. <laughs> you want to add that? <laughs> And I'm totally blanking on Roy, Mr. Roy's last name right now. <laughs> donor, donor. I knew we had a pronunciation error earlier. We weren't sure if it was donor or donor. So Roy Donor is our new planning commissioner and he will join us at that next meeting and we will be doing our reorg at that time as well. Okay. Our we reorganization. And we should let Roy know that they usually don't go this long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Commissioner comment, especially not during football season. <laughs> 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 um, commissioner comments. Um, commissioner Murphy, any comments? Oh, um, no. But this is all. This is very interesting tonight because we have so many different types of projects yeah. to look at, and I, I find this very fascinating. So thank you, Vice Chair. Welcome aboard, Roy. <laughs> Good to see you here. Commissioner McCann. Yeah, welcome aboard, Roy. We're excited to have you. And I just want to uh, remind everybody that the form-based code workshops start tomorrow. So they're tomorrow, Thursday, and next Tuesday from about noon to 3 here, if anyone wants to go. That's Doheny Village, right? Doheny Village form-based codes, yeah. All right. Um, I think we'll move to adjournment. The next exciting regular meeting of the Planning Commission will be held on Monday, June 13th, 2016, beginning at 6 p.m. or as soon thereafter in the City Council Chamber located at 33282 Golden Lantern, Suite 210 in beautiful Dana Point, California. Have a good night.